everyone, this is Nick with Gold Coast Flooring, and today I'm doing a carpet stretch job in Sacramento. And right off the bat, let's get into it. You can see that I've already unhooked the carpet from all the tack strip, and that means just pulling it up, and I'm getting started on my first stretch. And this stretch is so important because there was a wrinkle right where the main bedroom meets the hallway, and so I have to unhook that whole area in order to get that little wrinkle out. And the way this room is set up with all the cutouts, I'm gonna have to stretch one side one way and then stretch another side the other way in order to fully stretch this room the way it should be stretched. So the way stretching works is you wanna unhook like a U of the room. So you want one whole side attached. So that way you can stretch both left and right sides up and then you can stretch or you can tuck in the left side and then stretch it to the right. And here you can see because the closet has this shelf in there and it has too many cutouts that I just decided to do a seam there and cut it off and make it much easier. So now that the first stretch is done, we can go ahead and tie off this wall. That's what it's called when you um, basically kick the carpet over. You don't even have to kick it, just to tuck the carpet. And today I'm working with a baseboard that has a lot of grooves. And when you have a base like this, if you just pack it and tuck, you're going to chip off a lot of the wood. So my suggestion is not to tuck it like that, but to kind of ease it in and work it in. And here I'm doing the carpet to uh, laminate or wood transition. It works either way. And usually what they do is they install the tack strip um, just like you would do uh, tack strip to tile. But then when they install the T-molding, it covers up the tack strip. So when you rip it up to restretch, you don't want to really kick off that T-molding. And so you stretch it and there's a procedure that you tuck it and then you kind of ease it into that gap. So here you can see after the carpet's been trimmed, I use my hatchet and what I usually do is I just stuff it straight down so it kind of gets pushed there and then what I do is I go at an angle and I'll kind of wiggle it so it goes inside that little gap. And of course this is easier to do with two hands. Um, I wish I could be more hands on in explaining this thing and more detailed with the video but unfortunately it's just me and so I'm doing the best I can to kind of give you guys some helpful tips and uh, hopefully you guys can still learn even though I'm kind of limited. And so in areas where it's hard to reach or just very tight areas, uh, always just use your blade. It's very thin and as long as you don't jam it too hard it won't break. So now I can move on to stretching over where I'm going to do the seam and what you want to do if you're on a wood subfloor you want to just put some nails in there, uh, stay nails that's what they call it, to basically hold the carpet after you let off. And so now I'm nearing the end of my stretch and the way that this room is designed um, I couldn't quite get a good angle on stretching so I have a little bubble here. And I'm going to show you that if you use your knee kicker, I actually got this neat trick from Floors by Southern Boys, uh, and that's the way that they're designed. You can kick the carpet power stretcher, and it will adjust it over to the right. And now that little pucker is gone. So now that the main stretches are done with, all that's left to do is just do that last wall on the right side. And you're not going to get a lot of stretch this way, because that's just the way carpet is. And 
after the carpet's been stay nailed, I just finish up my seam with my Black & Decker steam iron, and that should be it. So here's the after result after everything's been power stretched and tucked in. There are some areas, especially where the ripple was too great, that will still look like the carpet is loose. It will still have an outline. And I always explain to my customer that it's like if you crumple up a piece of paper and leave it that way for a day or two, and then you make it flat again, you will still see where all the indentations are. But over time with constant vacuuming and foot traffic, and just the season changes and the humidity, it will release the backing and it will form into the shape that it's supposed to become. So the carpet will relax, it will get used to being flat, and that um, indentation that you see will disappear. So I hope this video helped my fellow carpet installers or carpet cleaners get an idea on stretching carpet. And if you're a consumer watching this, I hope it kind of gave you an idea on why carpet ripples happen.